Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me again today. My name's Dan, and today I'm painting for Kelsey and Scott. I am in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, let's make this official, shall we? <laughs> Not that anybody's counting, but you and me. Daily Adventure 896, wedding painting, Kelsey and Scott. Woohoo, now we're for real. <laughs> And I'm going to sound a little muffled today because welcome to Coronaville. <laughs> and uh, let me show you what I'm painting. I have taken a photograph with, the, with one of my backup telephones. Uh, not the room that I'm in, actually. This is a photograph of the room next door. As you can see, it's all decorated for the wedding, but um, most of the reception, I'll turn you around here. Most of the reception will be happening in the room where I am painting, of course. Lovely, but not as lovely as the other room. So I did communicate this with, I typically communicate with my clients ahead of time and say, uh, if I get there, as I did today, and the where the first I'm painting the first dance, which is by far the most common thing that I do here at weddings. And, but if if the location of the first dance is not the most picturesque, photogenic, shall we say, paintogenic? There we go. There's a new word for you, paintogenic. <laughs> if If it's not the best setting for a painting, then I ask for, excuse me. Who's <coughs> 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 sneezing with a mask on? What a trip. <laughs> Wonder what's on the inside of my mask now. Hmm. Hmm. Should I be breathing that for the next five hours? Okay. Don't tell Kelsey and Scott. <laughs> Actually, Hello, Kelsey and Scott. I sure hope you guys watch this someday. If so, I can't wait to meet you. I wish you all the best. Look forward, looking forward to this evening with you. Yay, we finally made it. How many times was your wedding rescheduled? I, I, I can't remember. I get them all mixed up anyway. I had 20 weddings, all got scheduled three different times, so. <laughs> I, I can't keep track. But anyway, it's good to be here. Kelsey and Scott, by, of course, by the time you see this, you'll be old married people. Happily married people, I hope. Happily married is my wife, Nancy, and I. Been married 40 years. And we still like each other a lot. There you go. May you, may you be as blessed as we are. I, I'm assuming at least that Kelsey has seen me paint before. Your mom has followed me for quite a while. So I'm not at all sure that that's the case, Kelsey. But anyway, if you have, then you're not shocked at what I'm doing right now. <laughs> help, help, uh, help for Scott out there because he's probably never seen me paint before. Nah, by the time he sees this, he's already seen the finished painting, so he's not really going to panic. But yes, this is, this is literally the way I start my paintings. I actually think I have saw some eight colored pencil here. Maybe not. Oh. Yep, yep, there it is. Oh, just red, good enough. That's good enough, eh? Good enough playing. Now let's get started doing some real drawing. Hello, Uncle. Good to have you on board, my friend. Good to, good to be back on board myself, to tell you the truth. I'm going to start doing some, 
some drawing. Let's pick a, a medium light color. Be orange. And I picked the other room. Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Good. Wedding planner Amanda's here. Shh, I'll put on my mask to talk to you. Um, I picked the Amanda. Yeah. Just just for what it's worth, I, I'm going to put um, Kelsey and Scott in the room next door yeah. because it's much more better for a painting. Sure. Is that right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. They were warned that that would probably happen, okay, so, so I think they'll be okay. But I just want you to know. Sure. It's the the first dance is going to be in here, though, right? Okay. That room is going to be more like entryway. To kind yeah. Of and then them late donuts. Is that right? Yeah. And then there will be a late night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Let's tell you what, I'm going to put this photograph right up here. So I can use the old you know, brush handle trick. This is, I, I do this all the time. I do this trick both in real life when I'm standing, you know, holding your brush up against an angle to, to guesstimate it, to try to get it right. And this is one of the main tricks that you should use if, if you don't savvy um, lin linear perspective. And no shame, really. I just think some brains do it and some brains don't. And if you don't do it, don't worry about it too much. Um, I believe, yes, you can be, still be a good artist, even though you don't, I use the word savvy, that's more than just get it. You have to get it at a gut level. So that's the word I use for that. So as you can see here, this is, probably the main trick that you should use. There, there are others. The other one, the other main trick would be um, the hands on a clock, on, a, on an analog clock. If any of you remember what an analog, <laughs> what an analog clock used to look like. Um, you know, name the time. This is quarter after, right? This is ten after, five after, right in the art. And most of us are we are we can actually discern, like that's ten after, that's eleven, twelve, thirteen, no, 11, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You, I think I don't think I'm unusual in that regard. That is in my ability to see those those angles accurately. I think most people do it. I think I've never been anybody else, so I can't prove that. But I use that trick with my students a lot, and and I have found generally students are quite adept at at spotting, recognizing like the difference between 15 minutes after the hour and say. 12 minutes after the hour. Anyway, so that's the other main trick. And again, it, it does help to be, if you really get savvy on linear perspective because you can work a little more freely or quickly or something like that. You, you don't have to measure every, do that to every single line. But if you, if you don't savvy linear perspective, then the only, th caution or the only thing that hampers you so to speak is it you have to be a little bit more laborious like the, what I'm doing right now with the with the brush you just have to make sure you do that to every single line don't don't wing it because if you don't get if you don't really understand linear perspective and you and you commence to wing in it <laughs> You're liable to wing it wrong. <laughs> 
and nobody can stand to see some perspective. Wang Tuong. <laughs> Don't wing it. <laughs> Don't wang it. <laughs> Sorry. This is wearing, wearing thin, isn't it? <laughs> So, Kelsey and Scott are going to be right, um, probably a little bit right of center here. Oh, and I also took a picture of the uh, wedding cake a little while ago. And um, I'll fit that in there too. I really do take my job seriously um, in, this, in this respect. That In the decades, yea, verily, <laughs> in the centuries to come, my painting, if all goes well, if it doesn't get damaged by smoke and a fire, or <laughs> some, some lost or torn or thrown out, <laughs> um, my wedding will become, my painting will become probably the number one you know, memory of, of the painting somewhat for Scott and Kelsey, but way more for their children and grandchildren. Now I say that, I don't, I don't think I'm being arrogant. I just think that's just the way it is. Um, because the photographs will be on a computer drive. There'll be a few on the wall, maybe. Fewer and fewer as the decades go by. But I think one of the main reasons people should hire a wedding painter, 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 wedding painter, <laughs> is because uh, their investment wears well, even as Scott and Kelsey get older and older and older and look less like my wife and I, and, <laughs> and look less and less and less like our wedding photographs, um, a painting remains a piece of art, a painting, no matter how old it is. Does that make sense? Whereas a photograph, eh, not quite so much. A photograph is a true piece of art, but it's just not the same. Anyway, let's, let's stop saying things that sound self-aggrandizing. Get on to something else. Nancy and I have been married 40 and one half years. And, um, <laughs> As you might imagine, we look a little bit different than we did on our wedding day. <laughs> we're much more handsome now, yes. Yes, yes, we're much better looking now. <laughs> you know, when you get to be my age, you discover the secret to beauty. Really, you know what the secret to beauty is? Be born 40 years later. <laughs> it's real simple. <laughs> be born 40 years later and dang, you're beautiful. Uh, the secret to real beauty. Uh, never mind, I'm going to get to, to meddle in here. The secret to real beauty is inner, isn't it? Inside. no way I can get it um, accurately. So I'll just catch the essence of it. It's all these welded, you, uh, custom welded curves in there. So we'll just make it something like that. Here's a, a change, a, a correction in the drawing, if you will. Hey, Anthony Alderman, thanks for watching. And David, <laughs> thanks for watching. 
<laughs> and wings it sometimes. <laughs> I am full of myself today, aren't I, David? <laughs> Can I paint them without their mat? I, when they, that sent, that question made, started making me a little nervous there, Uncle. <laughs> Can you paint the couple without their, oh, masks? Whew. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine what I was thinking. I can't imagine what I was thinking. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just ruined a perfectly sweet moment, didn't I? <laughs> uh, Scott and Kelsey, I hope you guys are ready for a little post-wedding humor by the time you watch this. Yes, can, I will certainly paint them without their masks on. Oh, wouldn't that be horrible? I mean, this is only, this is the third wedding I've done in the coronavirus season, shall we say. And um, so far, they, none of them have made, made the bride and groom wear a mask. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I want you to know, Kelsey and Scott, I really do feel bad that you're going to die in a week. <laughs> Too bad, but we need those pictures, man. <laughs> I rest my case. You are watching this, you are not dead. You're not even sick. <laughs> anyway. <Whew. laughs> Fortunately, I can't ruin your wedding till, till it's way past over. I mean, ruin it by you watching this video, if you know what I mean. <laughs> by the time you watch this, your wedding will be naught but a happy memory. And my silliness right here won't damage it a bit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kelsey and Scott, did I... Did I tell you, I started telling these other people, I um, am going to put your dance in the other room, the room next door, right? I actually, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to ask you before I got started, but honestly, I felt, I felt pretty safe about this one. I hope you're not disappointed. I felt safe because I, as I understand it, two events are going to happen in this room. The something early and something late. Even though the first dance is actually going to happen in this room right behind me. Oh, let's get the cake in there. Um, tell you what, I'm going to let you watch me go and take a picture of the cake. I already took one, but it was with my other phone, so... I'll do another one with this, this one. So once again, it is not, oh, I need some flash. It is not realistic that um, your cake is not in the other room. But just as uh, that'll do, use the flash. Don't, don't use flash very often, actually. Um, just as I'm putting your dance, which is here in that room, so likewise, I'm going to put your um, cake right over here. Kind of subtle, not, not great big, you know, almond, just subtle. I'm editing it a little bit. Mostly jacking up the um, the um, saturation quite a bit. Right, yeah. Let's let's get that in there.
a little bit of perhaps, I don't know what, in wedding painter instruction for, or just for curiosity for those who, who would like to know a little bit about some of the tricks. One of the, one of the things that I do pretty much all the time is um, while the bride and groom are dancing, whoops, sorry. Uh, there we go. While the bride and groom are dancing, I shoot them from about here. In other words, I shoot up at them. And I, this picture that I took next door, I also held it, at, that's important, held it at the same angle. Um, that is, of course, sh shooting up at people allows me to make them grand, heroic, you know, a little, little dramatic. You don't, you want people. Also, if, if I put people, which I'm, I think I'll, I'll probably put like the bartender back here, maybe some other people behind them, but um, Kelsey and Scott will be the closest to the camera. So if it's a low angle, then they'll be the biggest. Like their heads will come up to about here probably. Okay, so they'll be about that big. And if there are other people in the painting, they'll be, they'll be down. See, so that's, again, just standard. <laughs> I wonder if the pastor says you may kiss the bride, but don't take off the mask. Hello, Susan. <laughs> Welcome. Please get these guys under control, would you? <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> so I also tried to make sure I took a picture of the cake also at a low angle, I think would be the, the right description of that. Looking up at it, like just so that everything, everything in the, in the painting, of course, needs to be at the same angle. Otherwise it would be, that would be a mess. That's a little too prominent for my taste right now, but I think I could, I'm, I could move it, but I think I'm just going to paint it in a uh, fairly subtle manner. I'm not going, going to leave it, you know, huge, big glaring. And the bar is back here. There are, oh, let me talk about why this room is better than that room, just for fun. I'll turn you around again so you can see this room. This is not bad, um, but it's rather utilitarian. It's square. It's pretty because the tables are pretty. See, flickering candles, china, crystal, plants, and so on. So the, it's plenty pretty. This is pretty typical, but it's pretty just functional. It's just a rectangle, right? There are windows. If I had to paint in this room, I would utilize either the stairs that you might see on the far side of the bar or those windows or both. But the other room um, has a couple elements, what I call good bones. It has interesting, and one of the main things is, even though it's very industrial, those stairs, that angle, in a sense, if you will, makes the, 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 the bride and groom here will, will be the star. But that just makes a good painting. And the balcony up here as well. Plus, in the other room, they have little twinkly lights hanging from the ceiling, which they do not have in here. Here they have candles, which are twinkling. But I think the, the lights hanging from the ceiling win, if you will, win the romantic, visual romantic prize. I'm going to try, oh, I know, hang on, Let, let's do this. Let's do this old trick. Well, I guess I'm glad I did that. Things are not drying as fast as I would have thought. It's, the, today is October 24th, as you can see by the title there. Uh, um, but it's a very uh, Indian summer-ish kind of day, a high of 80 today and slightly humid, and the doors here are open, so it's very comfortable right now, but it, I just discovered, so to speak, 
that um, that it's more human in here than I thought because the painting is drying. The paint is drying fairly slowly. There's a big, some big white paint up there that was not dry. Just wipe that off a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to um, do some some glazes here, large areas of color. This painting, most of my wedding, the great majority of my wedding paintings, of course. Um, <laughs> Uncle, scary monsters, what fun, good for you. Um, most of my wedding paintings are decidedly warm. It's usually they're indoors like this and wedding venues no people don't look good under you know those old-fashioned horrible <laughs> greenish fluorescent lights so they put nice warm lighting so anyway most of my unless it's an outdoor scene um the great majority of my wedding paintings of course are warm that means i have to look for excuses to invent or incorporate, in my opinion, it, a good idea to look for some excuses to incorporate just a little bit of cool. Not so much that I tip the balance of the painting from warm to cool, not that much, but just a little bit. So here I am doing doing the warm thing, right? And you'll notice I'm trying to hit each stroke one time, because if I go back over it, it will definitely pick up the wet stuff that's not dry underneath. So it's a little bit scary, dangerous, challenging here. Um, painting wet acrylic on not quite dry acrylic without smearing everything that's underneath. And part of the reason I'm doing it is because the next thing, yeah, good, warm down, warmer down here. So let's get some red going down here in the corner. The next thing I'm going to do, um, I do not need to wait for this to dry. And that is, um, white acrylic. And, and I love, as, as, as if you, if you know if you follow me at all. I love um, doing wet white, it's hard to say these words, wet white into wet color. I love, I love doing that. I didn't always do that. I used to wait or prefer to wait for every, every layer to uh, dry, but I don't do that anymore. I, I discovered I was missing a golden opportunity to do some sloppy, wet, a la prima painting in acrylics, which the word a la prima doesn't usually refer. People do acrylics all at once, which is what that word means, but they don't do a la prima painting because acrylics dry so fast. It's usually a term reserved only for oil painting where you painting the key issue of a la prima painting is that you're painting wet into wet. It's the very kind of painting that drives early journey painters crazy because it's a mess. <laughs> because it doesn't do, you know, nothing does what you want it to. It's just, it's a soupy mess. And of course, that is precisely why I like it because we get happy accidents. We get things happening that we didn't expect or control. All right, so white now. And this, this is, uh, I often mention, probably my, I don't know, hard to say, probably my single favorite phase layer of the, of the 12, 13, or 14 
layers, stages, phases that my paintings go through. This first layer of white, for some reason, just tickles me. I just get a kick out of it. And as you can see, the, the white, the op opaque white uh, acrylic doesn't stay, doesn't stay white very long, right? It picks up all the wet stuff that's underneath it. Thus creating what I call that the soupy, the soupy mess, which means I'm getting marks, I'm getting interesting marks, I'm getting effects on the canvas that aren't all controlled by me. Again, the very thing that drives an early journey painter crazy is that, that loss of control. Believe me, I know the feeling because I, I operated in that realm for many years as an artist. I want control, doggone it, I want control. <laughs> It was late, fairly late in life, about the age of 50, when I discovered that, oh, losing control, <laughs> made for, chuckle, chuckle, so to speak, losing control made for better paintings. Because transcendent things happen, on the, can happen. Also, disasters can happen. <laughs> Let's be... Let's be real. <laughs> Good things can happen, and so can bad. So that's the price you pay for losing control. <laughs> Let's flip over here to the cake. Do a little bit of wedding cake painting in here. Again, I don't want it to be terribly prominent. Just, just present. Not prominent. Prominent. Just present. There you go. If it's alliterated, it sounds good. <laughs> and of course, Kelsey and Amanda are going right there, so there's not a lot I can do about them. I have no idea what they look like. And in reality, there's, there is a serving table right here with lavender tablecloth on it. And making an executive decision here, I am not going to put that in the painting. Scott and Kelsey, hope you're okay with that. <laughs> Imagine Kelsey saying, no, that was the one thing in the whole wedding that I want. <laughs> I hope that's not the case, Kelsey. <laughs> you never know. Maybe, maybe Kelsey, you know, wove that purple fabric all by herself. I, I jest. As I said, <laughs> Kelsey and Scott, I can't possibly ruin your wedding. <laughs> by the time you see this, you'll be safely married. <laughs> and I can't ruin your day <laughs> by saying silly things on this video. <laughs> Wedding painter causes divorce. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Oh, good for you. Another pet portrait, Beagle. Good for you. All right. Gang, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to stop there. As you can tell, this is complete soup. And it won't be dry for a long time. So I'm going to end this broadcast, and I'll start another one in a little while when I come back with photographs of the bride and groom dancing. All right? I think that will be, it might be an hour from now. I might fiddle with this a little bit before then, but not enough to keep broadcasting. Okay? Thanks for watching.
Um, I'm rethinking. Should I? Yeah, I will do a fresh broadcast. All right. Bye-bye, y'all.